As it gets late in the season, one of the things you have to take a look at if you're going to spray any pesticide is the pre-harvest label. We'll talk about what exactly that is and why it's so important on today's show. Well, we ran into this in soybeans with herbicides. This year, again, we had a lot of issues with pigweed across the country, and guys were spraying maybe Flexstar in some areas of the country. Well, that runs out because of a 10-month rotational restriction to corn for a lot of guys back in June or maybe the 1st of July. Then you look at your next option and while that may have a 45 day pre-harvest interval so you got a little bit of a window others have an interval where it's a certain growth stage in the crop maybe it's r2 or r4 in soybeans no matter which product you're using for weed control insect control whatnot you've got to look at how much time you need in that pre-harvest interval we ran into a problem this year with some soybean seed that came from south america it was a brand new variety it was a liberty link variety and they had done a pre-harvest burn down or pre-harvest desiccation with Roundup. They wanted to kill the plants because the stalks were still green so they would be able to harvest it quicker. And what happened is the weather turned and all of a sudden they sprayed the Roundup and a couple days later, wow, those beans look like they're ready to go. And so the guys pulled the trigger, harvested the beans. Anyway, when those beans came back up, now they still had some Roundup residual in the seed itself. And we had some issues with the seed in the spring, planting it in the soil. That was a big deal. If we would have just followed that pre-harvest interval and it waited at least seven days before we harvested the beans, it would have been enough time for the plant to work that Roundup through. The Roundup would have been gone and the seed would have been perfect. Now that's a really an extreme example, but the same thing happens when we're thinking about crops that we're raising for food, we want to make sure whatever pesticide we've used has worked its way through that plant system so it's no longer going to be in that seed that's going to be consumed by humans or by animals. A pre-harvest interval is listed on the label of most pesticides and all it basically means is how many days do you need to spray before harvest. So it might be seven days, it might be 45 days, it might even be 120 days. But the point is as a farmer you have to take a look at hey when am I going to harvest and obviously we don't know exactly what the weather is going to bring us. So if it's 60 days, I say, I don't know if it's exactly 60 days. It might be 70 days, it might be 80 days, or it might be 60 days depending on the weather. So as a farmer, we're just making an educated guess as to when the last date is we can spray. But then once we say, hey, I'm spraying today, now I've got to look at, I can't go into that field again to do harvest until 60 days later, or 45 days later, whatever it is. So sometimes we have some late season problems in our crops, like bugs, for example. We're looking at soybeans. Sometimes we have to spray pretty close to harvest. Well, there might be one insecticide that has a 28 day pre-harvest interval and another has a seven day pre-harvest interval and both will work on the insect. If I'm up against it and I say, ooh, I might be able to harvest in 25 days, well, then that excludes the 28 day pre-harvest interval product and I'll just pick the product that has the seven day pre-harvest. So how do you set these pre-harvest intervals? That's what many people will ask. Well, how do they know for sure that it's safe 30 days ahead? There's exhaustive testing that the companies will do in conjunction with the government. The government will have some strict requirements as we need this much testing done and then we'll see what the levels are in the plants and make sure that it's completely worked through the system before we're going to approve it. So you'll see a lot of variance in the different products as Brian was mentioning. One may be seven day pre-harvest. In fact, there are some bug sprays that you can use in vegetable crops with a one day pre-harvest interval. You may spray on a tomato to kill a certain bug that's damaging the tomato and you may be able to harvest one day later. It all depends on what kind of testing has been done and if the government has proven that, you know what? Yeah, that is safe to put on one day before then it's going to get approved. If they find, no, we need at least 30 days to get that residue away, then that's what they're going to do as well. Yeah, but here's the thing. You might see a pre-harvest interval of 60 days, for example. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's dangerous to spray within seven days of harvest. It just means it's not labeled, it's not approved. And one of the reasons why could be the company just didn't choose to spend the millions of dollars to prove it to the government that, hey, this actually is safe because they said, you know, everybody's gonna spray early anyway. So since nobody's gonna spray close to harvest, why do we need to go through all that testing and spend all those millions of dollars? So you do see some of that, but when you see the pre-harvest label, there's two things you need to understand. As long as you're spraying and giving it more time than that. So if it's seven days and you spray 10 days out, hey, you're perfectly safe, okay? So the government's proven it's safe, that's number one. And then number two, the label is the law. So if it says seven days, you gotta make sure you're giving that seven days before you harvest. Well, one thing you may be out there spraying for is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 